for chapter 7 nutritional and food requirements of adolescents uh, so good nutrition is very much essential for to teenagers even in previous class we have discussed about calcium okay the absorption of calcium how it is essential and all not just calcium all the other vitamins and minerals okay especially from the ages from 12 to 20 as teenagers go through a lot of growth and development during this time okay so around uh, the cal the day to day calorie requirement may fluctuate between 1400 to 2800 depending on the number of uh, exercise they have how what is the level of their activity okay and metabolism also is different from uh, as compared to boys and girls okay um, um, teenage boys have a higher rate of metabolism as compared to girls okay so we are based on all these different criteria that calorie requirement may differ and also they are going to a phase in which they are facing an excessive growth spurt okay in that case uh, it does affect having too much of calories is required for optimum growth and development but not too much uh, beyond 3000 is not uh, essential within 3000 and 1500 that's enough depending upon the level of activity etc then foods that in, uh, that are included in a teenage diet should have a variety of fruits and vegetables whole grains legumes beans food with proteins and iron plenty of water uh, and also their body requires a lot of sugar in this uh, particular age because the body requires energy to compensate for the excessive growth spurt etc so the, you, you may see why why the teenagers are indulging more in sugary food junk food okay uh, soda carbonated drinks sugar uh, sugary carbonated drinks etc okay that is one of the reason their body craves for such kind of food because the body requires high amount of energy to maintain that um, accelerated growth and development especially in this early teenage and late teenage so that the, that's the brief about the first topic about nutritional uh, requirements and uh, the, all the other sub topics are like for energy uh, boys require around 2750 to 3000 calories but ideally it should not exceed beyond 3000 okay uh, if they are physically well active the, uh, the ch a child is participating in sporty activities okay they are very athletic uh, and they do a lot of extracurricular activities then 3000 calories per day can be ideal but without uh, without that without any extracurricular activities and with the sedentary lifestyle it's ideal to stay within 2500 or 2000 calories okay but not below uh, 1500 because that will affect the optimum growth even for boys as well as for girls okay uh, protein requirement make sure uh, if if a child is weighing uh, 50 kg okay uh, so 50, just imagine uh, uh, the child weighs around 50 kg and uh, uh, so the amount of protein okay depending uh, the weight of protein which they should have should not be less than 50 gram okay uh, it should be ideally more than 50 gram how we are calculating that is whatever the amount of protein they are having should not go beyond uh, one gram per kg body weight okay maintain high you can go uh, you, you can keep two gram per uh, kg body weight three gram per kg body weight that can be optimum but if you go below uh, consumption of uh, one gram of uh, protein per body uh, per kg body weight that will lead to uh, deprived growth and development so protein is very much required uh, especially when the growth spurt is happening protein is very much requirement required so do not go beyond um, one gram per kg body weight have more than uh, one gram two gram three gram depending upon what kind of diet the child is having depending upon that and to compensate for their energy requirement that amount of protein should be there but this is the um, threshold be, uh, be, uh, beyond that less than one gram uh, per kg body weight should uh, should not be ideal okay so fats 35 to 50 gram per kg body weight can be taken because uh, when the when the metabolism rate is uh, is also very quite high 
during adolescence. So uh, fat is also utilized just like how carbohydrates give up energy, especially in adolescence, fat is also burned in the same rate. And uh, minerals, can anyone say in the chat box which minerals is very much essential? If you have attended yesterday's class, which mineral is very much essential during teenage? Yes, calcium. Calcium, yeah, iron. Uh, zinc is also essential, but zinc is, uh, you can get zinc uh, through different sources of food, okay? Zinc deficiency is not very common among uh, adolescents, okay? Most of their uh, zinc is met. Also, if a child, for example, um, ad adolescence is, a, uh, is an age where uh, you start to think a lot about how you look, okay? You compare yourself a lot with your peers. Uh, in that case, uh, some children may reach their optimum growth and development by the age of 18 or 19, okay? But some kids, they do not reach that, okay? Their puberty uh, may have not hit them at the right age, okay? They, they may have not developed, uh, in case of boys, their, their boys wouldn't have be crack, cracking so much, okay? They must have not yet got the development of facial hairs, okay uh, or growth spurt have not reached they, they do not have enough uh, body mass okay that kind of issues some kind uh, some kids may have in that case you can give them zinc supplements otherwise uh, a balanced diet will usually have enough amount of zinc so that you do not have to worry about uh, but calcium yes uh, and again they are revising the amount of calcium that the indian diet requires especially for adolescents uh, every year they're revising the date uh, the amount earlier it was around 400 uh, mg of calcium uh, per day but now they have maximized it up to 800 mg so revision is going on so what is given in the textbook as of now is uh, 800 mg so remember that for uh, adolescents 800 mg of calcium 800 mg of phosphorus okay and then iron, very uh, um, I, that's a mineral very much important. Uh, can you tell in the chat box who requires it more, girls or boys? Teenage girl or teenage boy? Who requires iron the most and why? Yeah, girls require a more amount of iron because to compensate the menstrual loss, okay? It's said that uh, every day when, when a girl attains menarche, menarche is the time when she starts menstruating, the age, okay, now it is around 12 to 13 years of age, uh, so when, as soon as the girl at, uh, attains menarche, uh, every day she loses around 0 0.5 gram of iron from her body because loses, uh, loses in the sense uh, that part, that amount of iron is required to uh, make the thick uterine lining, okay, every, uh, as soon as the uh, menstruation cycle ends within the next two weeks her uterus again goes to goes through certain changes so that the uh, uterine wall the endometrium okay that's what we call it endometrium the uterine wall thickens it took uh, take uh, take a possible implantation if there is a chance of pregnancy okay so for thickening of the uterine wall you require a lot of iron also a human body requires iron to maintain optimum levels of hemoglobin and red blood cells. So what happens here is uh, because of hormonal changes, the first priority is given for uterine thickening. And then, uh, then the remaining number of iron will go for hemo uh, maintaining the optimum level of hemoglobin, etc. Okay, so that is why anemia, uh, iron deficiency anemia is very much common among teenage girls than boys, okay? So uh, in the textbook, it is given uh, iron, the amount of iron, it should be around 12 microgram per kg, depending on the child's body weight, it will differ, okay? So 10, uh, 10 microgram per kg for boys and girls, they should have minimum 8 microgram per body weight, uh, per kg body weight, just to maintain the optimum hemoglobin level and on top of that eight microgram, these girls will require additional eight gram. So total 
a girl a teenage girl will require 16 16 microgram per kg body weight of iron to maintain optimum uh, blood hemoglobin level as well as to maintain a optimum menstrual health for boys it is 12 microgram per kg body weight okay so it's given the textbook in uh, in girls in respect to girls they have divided the number but in, in, uh, when you sum it up it is 16 microgram per kg body weight okay that's the uh, amount which is given in this particular textbook of dietetics uh then vitamins uh, okay come uh, you can tell in the chat box which vitamin is very much important we discussed about it yesterday also <coughs> level of which vitamin yeah vitamin d is very essential as well as other vitamins also the fat soluble water soluble is also essential vitamin d is essential so that is why you have to encourage to encourage teenagers to have a um, activities uh, have a playful day okay uh, have outside activities their extracurricular activity should require uh, activities that is done outside not just in indira do not encourage too much of gaming etc okay encourage them to go out play okay spend time out in the sun okay so so that the vitamin d derivatives get activated Uh, with the help of sunlight so that has to be encouraged and uh, the other vitamins other fat soluble vitamins okay that depends upon the diet for fat and uh, water soluble vitamins that depends upon the right when it comes to vitamin d why we say it is essential because it is uh, the absorption of vitamin d is activity related okay is also lifestyle related so encourage teenagers to go outside spend time outside in the sun in daylight okay so they do not uh, suffer they will not suffer from vitamin d deficiency rickets or soft bones okay and other vitamins uh, you can uh, you can uh, make sure the child require gets uh, other vitamins through their food etc water what do you think is the water intake is it adequate or inadequate among teenagers water intake will teenagers will have adequate water intake it's inadequate even uti is very common because water deficient uti is very common among teenagers the reason being they indulge a lot in junk foods okay and even if it is water uh, they uh, they indulge a lot in sugary carbonated Uh, sodas etc okay so encourage them to have plain water as much as possible uh, and this is a time where you can't force um, force something on them okay this is a age where uh, a forceful uh, disciplinary action you can't take okay so in that case it's better to give them buttermilk okay or fruit juices without no sugar uh, make fruit fruit juices 100% fruit juices without adding any water or any sugar component okay uh, so encourage them to take water in that ways using butter milk or fruit juices okay milk shakes like that okay you can take a screenshot of this particular slide so uh, for a male child and a female child depending on what age okay in which adolescent age they are in and what will be their total energy requirement every day protein calcium and iron these are the three main components very essential for their growth and development growth and development for adolescent okay this protein calcium and iron component very much important for all the areas of their optimum health and development so take a, a screenshot of that calcium we have revised it now it is not 600 it is now 800 okay 800 mg per day in this table they have showed 600 but now recently uh, the icmr have has revised it up to 800 mg of calcium per day so that's how you have to encourage teenagers to have uh, dairy products milk etc Uh, and even in some schools they do have uh, regular bone density checkups etc okay some health checkups will be done under the uh, under the curriculum category so in that case you can identify which child may be suffering from calcium deficiency and accordingly calcium tablets are given to these children okay some schools do that uh, through diet but it has to be maintained 
uh, otherwise uh, always remember in the in the table that is for your reference when you are practicing but for exam purpose in the textbook it what is given it is 16 when you add 8 plus 8 it is 16 uh, microgram per day you have to give that much of uh, that much of amount of time to females okay the protein components uh, de depending on different age how much they should have it is given the table so you can refer that to but in exam, don't worry about the table which you have took a screenshot recently. Food requirements, uh, eating patterns. Usually in adolescence, the eating pattern is they will they like to have a food from outside. Okay, they do not depend too much on home cooked food uh, until and unless it is force feeded to them. Okay, because a lot there is a lot of uh, social interactions happening in this age. Uh, peer pressure uh, to roam, roam around with friends so whatever they have junk food okay in the dhaba or thela uh, somewhere okay that is what that is how they meet their usual food requirements etc so eating patterns uh, depend a lot on their uh, uh, health uh, the deficiencies and the toxicities which they may face so usually they have the tendency to skip meals it's very common among girls because uh, this is the age when they become a lot body con conscious. Uh, they they think a lot about how physically they uh, they present themselves. Okay, so in that case, dieting, okay, dieting patterns, uh, controlling food, food, avoiding food, okay, skipping meals, that kind of uh, behavior you will see a lot during this age. Eating uh, food outside, frequent snacking not having a proper meal but instead of that they replace the a proper meal with a lot of snacks okay and uh, heavy reliance of convenience food like maggie okay uh, uh, any instant noodles instant soup whatever you can make instantly at home okay Re reliance heavy reliance on that kind of food that affects the nutritional quality and trying vegan diet or vegetarian diet depending on what kind of celebrities they're following Okay, they blind they don't listen to their uh, guardians or parents during this age it depends upon the social media the influence of social media the diet patterns is also influenced so like that bad diets means uh, what is trendy now recently keto diets paleo diets these were trending so they try to experiment in these areas also so these are the eating patterns which is very common among uh, adolescents then benefits from home cooked food, it is always beneficial. Uh, encourage them to have mo most of their meals from home, what is cooked at home. Okay, encourage them to finish their tiffins, uh, which they send to, which they, which they are sent to school with. Okay, and the food we can be prepared with high fiber, especially when it is home cooked food. We can prepare with high fiber. You can control the sugar content because you know the teenagers do rely a lot on. Uh, junk food okay they have a lot of convenience food these has sugar components so in that case when you are cooking home cooked food for teenagers reduce the content of sugar and fat from the home cooked foods so that's how you can benefit from home food and you have dietary guidelines the uh, well-balanced nutritious food has to be given to them enough calcium rich food has to be taken from by the both the genders uh, and food should be colorful colorful and attractive that makes it more palatable and they feel uh, interested to have food and uh, no meals of the day should be skipped it, you can give them less quantity of frequent meals but uh, try to uh, try to look out for any eating disorders we'll discuss that later what kind of eating disorders are there which is very common among teenagers we'll discuss that later uh, then iron rich food has to be given uh, in case of non-vegetarian food as well as uh, red meat etc and then liver and uh, liver uh, animal organs can be given for compensating the iron and if it is a vegetarian diet uh, rely on green leafy vegetables dark green leafy vegetables mm -hmm. to prevent anemia include as much of fruits and vegetables as much as it is possible seasonal fruits um, eating habits should be independent of emotions there is a lot of chances of stress eating or skipping the meal, uh, meals because of stress that is seen, especially when you you have a child who is attending for board exams, etc. Okay, 10th and 12th, okay, the, the stress of these exams, either the child will be stress eating or other, other the child will skip the entire day's meal just to put their entire energy on studies, okay. So these are uh, psychological behaviors associated with food, it has to be noted junk food limitations has to be done 
then coming to nutritional problems okay these are the eating disorders and other nutritional problems very common among teenagers obesity uh, it is seen that south uh, studies have been done in south india which has shown that 22 percentage of boys are more prone to be obese and uh, they uh, and 18 percent of girls are prone to obesity especially the children who are in age from 13 to 18 so that study was done in south india so that is the numbers statistics we get from south india uh, and then ex why, why this is happening obesity there is an excessive intake of calories convenience food fried food junk food junk food etc and there is very less physical activity okay and also now the schools are shut down okay that kind of motion and, and uh, going out uh, whatever physical pe uh, pe classes were going on in uh, schools whatever extracurricular activities sports and education etc was going on in school now it has been closed up or locked up because of the pandemic etc so chances of obesity is much more in these days uh, as compared to previous years so parents have to play an important role by pro promoting healthy eating uh, habit uh, eating behavior strategy to control weight etc among children um, and you must have seen in 2020 when pandemic was just starting okay there was half of the population who was suffering but half of the population just started youtube channels and food ch blogging channels teenagers enjoying making um, different kind of what balcona coffee uh, enjoying in uh, indulging in baking cakes at home Okay, you must have tried these uh, things at the uh, at your home also. Okay, so what happen, uh, happens here is um, trial and errors led to lot of use of lot of sugars and fat. Okay, and this kind of behavior at home, you are you are locked up in home and indulging in food uh, as your way out. Okay, and it's very common about among teenagers now to find uh, kids who are in, more interested in cooking in baking and also indulging themselves okay to get out of the stress of other areas of life so that's how obesity is very rampant among the teenagers these days okay then you have eating disorders uh, first is anorexia nervosa, uh, nervosa. Uh, so the symptoms which you can see here is other children it will affect mostly girls as compared to boys. Boys are also uh, affected. There are so many ce celebrities, men and women, okay, who are affected with this disorder, anorexia nervosa. Okay, you can see the movie I have mentioned here, To the Bone. It's one of, uh, there are a lot of movies made uh, showcasing these eating disorder. If you see this movie, To the Bone, it is available on Netflix, etc. Netflix Prime, it is available. You can make a note of it. You can go watch this movie, understand how, psychologically anorexia nervosa affects a person and not just anorexia nervosa uh, but other uh, disorders to the bone the name of the bone uh, it is mentioned here um, the name of the movie so not just anorexia nervosa other disorders which we will discuss now even that is shown in this particular movie so Please, if it if you have time, please do watch this. You will understand how the, the concept of these eating disorders and how it affects the teenage adolescent's life. Okay, uh, so the signs and symptoms you can see here is uh, the child becomes extremely thin. In the image, you can see you can make a note of it. They become extremely thin, thin, but um, they have an image ID of themselves as they are extremely fat okay even if they have completely lost their um, fat mass okay fat cells but they do not perceive themselves to be attractive they think they are still fat they need to lose more okay and uh, there is a rapid weight loss and uh, loss of menstrual periods if it is a girl they will uh, loss of menstrual periods because of this disorder and uh, there is a development of uh, lanugo a fine that is thick dark brown hair all over their arms and legs this is the body this is body's reaction to keep the person warm okay because they have lost a lot of fat and the body is producing excessive amount of hair just to compensate uh, the loss of heat from the body okay so you can see that and you, you will see bruises uh, all over this chi uh, children's body it's like even if they have a small amount of food they will go and exercise a lot 
they will do hardcore cardio exercise etc to lose whatever calories they have just took uh, you, usually you will see parents force feeding them okay and they are sent to rehabilitation centers where um, they are force fed etc so that they don't die because of starvation okay so these are the symptoms which you can see all the symptoms are mentioned in the textbook from page number 137 to 138 complaints of nausea blotting constipation and after eating normal amounts of food, if you force feed them or you force them to have food and after, even if they have normal amount of small, even small amount of food, they will complain they are having constipation, blotting. Um, they may not be suffering from that, but they want you to believe that they are suffering from these disorders. So don't give them food. Okay, That's how they act. And uh, they avoid social invitations and social activities, which where food is served. Okay, they will not go for any uh, family functions or ceremonies because just to avoid food. And they're 24-7, uh, they are hungry, but they will not have food at any cost. And uh, this is seen even in the movie, if you see, you, you can see that you give them any recipe or any food and ask them to give the calorie by division. Okay, what are the components of this particular recipe and how you will divide the calorie, uh, cal calorie wise, how you, how you will classify this particular recipe out of the uh, just without looking anything without even googling anything they can give you uh, to the teeth calorie of each component of the uh, component or each ingredient which was used in that recipe so that's uh, one giveaway that the child that the girl or the child may be suffering from anorexia nervosa give them any recipe just ask them what is the calorie uh, calorie uh, classify that divide the calorie of an idli or a vada Okay, without even uh, referring to a book or a, or using internet from their brain, they can tell you how much calories each food have. Okay, and if you, uh, this is one of the tactics which the doctors will use uh, to identify if a child is having uh, suffering from anorexia nervosa or not. They, or from, from, the, from their thoughts, they can give you, they, they have done in-depth research in their alone time, uh, whenever they're alone, they do in-depth research of calories, how to burn calories, okay? Uh, every possible knowledge which is out there about uh, a particular recipe or whatever food that uh, that is being served to them at home, okay, whatever meal pattern they have at home, they would have by hearted the calorie of each and every ingredient their parents may be using in the uh, in their household okay and with that they know by heart okay um, what ingredients has exactly how much amount of calories one gram of um, one gram of pasta okay so cooked pa pasta well, one one serving of cooked pasta how much calorie it, it may have okay depending on the vegetables used depending on the sauce used okay depending on the oils used they will calculate calculate and give you the exact amount of calories so that is one giveaway sign of uh, to understand if the child is suffering from anorexia nervosa or not okay and they have a very low self-esteem because of the image id which they have okay they do not feel they are attractive enough even if they are very thin okay they look very uh, emaciated completely they have lost their uh, fat mass you can see the entire skeletal structure of their body through their skin uh, and even in that stage they will feel they are too fat they have to still lose weight okay so that's a that's one eating disorder anorexia nervosa uh, then you have bulimia nervosa so they will uh, in bulimia nervosa they will eat food okay they will frequently eat food and they will go to the toilet they will Put, put their uh, finger inside their tongue and then they will try to induce vomiting, okay? They want to have the satisfaction of having food, but they do not want that food to be metabolized uh, and utilized by the body. So they will uh, induce vomiting. Soon after they have food, they will go and induce vomiting so that whatever they had, it comes out, okay? And it will not be metabolized, okay? And so that they will not gain weight. Uh, can you name a uh, famous celebrity who was having this a, a royalty? <clears throat> you can just name any celebrities because 
people are coming out in the open about it they are accepting only the celebrities who have accepted that they are suffering they suffer from bulimia nervosa anyone they have opened about this uh, uh this this uh, this eating disorder okay they themselves the celebrities who suffer from this kind of disorders after getting proper health they themselves become an advocate to prevent eating disorders on teenagers okay so one such uh, celebrity is princess diana okay the late princess diana she is not uh, alive now but she was suffering from bulimia nervosa okay in indian film industry also in south indian film industry you, if you know who is timran okay she was a, a big star in eight, uh, 90s and all okay uh, so she was also suffering from bulimia nervosa these are the celebrities who have come out in open there are n number of celebrities especially working in entertainment industry you will find a lot of uh, people working in entertainment entertainment industry suffering from this kind of disorders okay in binge eating uh, overeating when stressed <coughs> feeling of loneliness and whenever they eat they eat large amount of food even when if they are not if they are not hungry and after having large amount of food they have a um, guilt feeling okay they have a feeling of guilt and they have a feeling of low self esteem uh, that is binge eating okay so for example they will also undertake dieting and everything they will diet for 4 to 5 hours okay they will not have anything for 4 to 5 hours but when they have they will have food for two days food at at once okay and then after having that much amount of food they do not know when to stop in binge eating that's the that's a psychological factor here they do not know when to stop okay they eat to a point where they are really uncomfortable they can't move they can't breathe okay uh, they eat to a point where they are they are they are physically very uncomfortable uncomfortable they don't they do not know when to stop okay and usually the people who suffer from binge eating disorder they are very obese and overweight um, if you go and see this movie about to the moon uh, all these different types of um, this uh, eating disorders are showcased okay it's it uh, you will understand this concept way in a very interesting manner through these movies okay then female athlete triad i'll explain explain that later uh, that is uh, involved with the um, feeling of low self esteem after having so much of food after being so um, comfortably overloaded with food okay and on top of that the uh, uh, the binge eating the people who are who suffer from binge eating they are um, if you take the bmi they are either obese or overweight okay obese or their third degree obesity and all and because of that uh, they have the image id that look, look at themselves in the mirror and what they have recently done they have done even after knowing the their body weight after, even after knowing their uh, image id they are not able to stop themselves from having food okay they have an overwhelming urge to have food and they know that it is wrong and they are not able to stop it on uh, by themselves and because of that they feel very low self esteem okay they do not feel confident they try to avoid social situations okay they do not have too much of social interactions okay their friendships are uh, mismanaged okay they do not have a very good uh, a good safety and secure uh, uh, bonding with others okay they uh, they like to be left alone with them and the, the, them and their food okay that's how they like to live because of low self esteem obviously they will avoid the social gatherings etc and female athlete triad it is related to menstruation i'll explain that in the next slide uh, then you have anemia nutritional uh, especially iron deficiency anemia is more common uh, as compared to other forms of anemia uh, other forms of anemia we have explained that in nutritional anemia the chapter of nutritional anemia which a repeat will come up uh, in the coming up month in march so anemia um, the most common thing in india is people who are from uh, low 
uh, low income families okay in that cases the if they have girl children um, usually uh, the girl child is anemic especially from the low income families and on top of that having irregular menstrual cycle or heavy uh, menstruation that will also lead to iron deficiency anemia on top of that uh, indian diet is usually very deficient in iron and iron is a very tricky mineral even if you have a diet which is rich in iron iron requires other minerals uh, and vitamins like fol folic acid and other components and enzymes to be present in optimum level in your body optimum ph is required for absorption so it is very difficult to uh, absorb the iron and utilize it just having iron rich food or just having iron supplements is not enough okay that is why iron supplements come along with folic acid etc so that absorption is uh, pushed through okay so that is the reasons of uh, reason why we see anemia especially iron deficiency anemia in india under nutrition uh, dieting okay you know, that's one of the reason why a child is under nutrition uh, malnourished in this age dieting and skipping the meals not having proper diet having junk food etc <clears throat> that all the that are the reasons of under nutrition then premenstrual syndrome uh, few days just a week before the menstrual cycle um, pms girls do suffer from the premenstrual syndrome usually um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we'll discuss about uh, when we discuss about the water soluble vitamins, about vitamin C, vitamin B complex. In that detail, we will study how vitamin C and its absorption interacts with other minerals. Okay, so you have to wait till then about to learn about vitamin C. So yeah, premenstrual syndrome. Can anyone give examples of <clears throat> what is, what are the signs and symptoms of PMS, premenstrual syndrome? Commonly, it should be known by all. Yeah, mood swings, blotting, indulging in too much of sugary uh, stuff, okay? Sugary food, uh, junk food, okay? Just before you get your periods or just before you, a week just before you get your date or period, okay, you try to indulge law in lot of, yeah, sweet craving, uh, yeah, breast engorgement, breast tenderness, okay, uh, breast tenderness, and usually the body or body weight also fluctuates, okay, you weigh a bit more heavy before your periods as compared to after the uh, periods, okay, <clears throat> you weigh a lot in your luteal phase when you divide the menstrual cycle in their faces so you weigh a lot in your luteal phase yeah increased appetite water retention because of water retention you weigh a lot okay <laughs> irritability okay getting angry very easily irritability and if you see some sad movies and all in this especially in, in your luteal phase or a week before your periods you get too emotional okay overwhelmed by uh, emotions leg cramps etc it depends upon individual to individual that cramp leg cramps stomach aches okay abnormal contractions of uterus yeah dietary management can be done to reduce blotting and water retention and all have have low sodium diet okay have have diet which can be easily digested okay try to avoid too much of uh, fat fatty foods during mm, these eight times and all yeah so i guess everyone has got a good examples of uh, to identify the premenstrual syndrome okay so that is also related to the diet uh, your diet affects <coughs> nutritional problems uh, is if, if you indulge a lot Okay, if you're if you if you especially when you already have some disorders like PCODs, okay, uh, or first of all, your menstrual cycle will not be on time, okay, a delayed menstrual cycle. Uh, on top of that, uh, when the PMS happens for the for the women who are suffering from PCODs, etc., it is very much exaggerated, okay. Especially if you have PCODs or other ovarian or uterine disorders, 
on top of that, when you are in the stage of PMSing or PMS, uh, this these symptoms which we have discussed uh, just now is much more exaggerated. Okay. Uh, malnutrition uh, in India, that's a that's a social factor affecting malnutrition among uh, uh, girl children. Especially first is the a bias. Okay, there is a bias that exists between girls and boys. Okay, uh, so if if a family in it, it is very common among in rural India as compared to urban India. In rural India, you can see um, most of the nut health, nutritionally healthy food will be served to uh, the men and the boys in the family. Okay, the girls are not uh, are usually nutritionally deprived. Okay, if they have brothers and sisters in a family in rural India. Uh, nutritional focus is more on the boys' health rather than the girls' health. So that is a nutritional bias. That's a social factor. Then you have child marriage, teenage marriage, okay, teenage pregnancies. Teenage marriages will lead to teenage pregnancies and that will lead to malnutrition, okay, uh, preterm pre pre birth and uh, unhealthy babies, okay. Uh, so that's how malnutrition uh, gets in the way in of especially in nutritional problems among uh, girls in India. This is one of the social factors which comes into play: child marriage, uh, nutritional bias, etc. Female athlete triad. It is if you see the green triangle here. Okay, uh, eumenorrhea means normal normal menstruation. Okay, um, twenty eight to thirty five days menstrual cycle that's that's quite normal not just uh, 35 days nowadays if you take uh, into consideration because of various stress factors uh, in urban area you can uh, take it up to 40 to 45 days as a normal menstrual cycle okay uh, so human area means you are you have a uh, normal menstrual cycle that you do not have any un underlying diseases like ovarian cyst or anything, uh, any disorders of your uterus, fallopian tube, or your, uh, your female reproductive system is very much healthy and you have a normal menstrual cycle without any menstrual cramps, etc. Okay, and, uh, bec uh, and how do you achieve a normal menstrual cycle? It is because of optimum energy availability through good food, a balanced diet. And because of that, you will, uh, al along with a normal menstrual cycle, you will have a good bone mass and optimum bone health. Okay, this other this green triangle is uh, uh, will take place when everything is optimum. You are well nourished, and you do not have any underlying diseases. As soon as you deviate uh, farther from this green triangle, okay, uh, energy when when there is a re uh, reduced energy availability, especially when you have a disordered eating or you have a dis eating disorder or you are dieting too much, fasting too much, okay. Uh, your intake will be reduced and when the intake reduces your energy availability will be reduced okay and that will lead to uh, subclinical menstrual disorders the early signs and symptoms your uh, as soon as you take uh, your nutritional quality and quantity reduces uh, in respect to your menstrual cycle you will see your menstrual menstrual cycle becomes irregular you may have cramps in between your cycles, that is, when even when you are not menstruating, you feel the same kind of cramps. Okay, uh, like if, if you are having leg cramps during your menstrual cycle, uh, under uh, lower abdomen cramps, uh, lower back cramps. Okay, it differs from individual to individual. Okay, these same cramps will start to appear in between your menstrual cycle, even when you are not menstruating. Okay, so these are the signs and symptoms of submenstrual disorders. Either your menstrual cycle will be delayed. Okay, earlier you were getting your cycle between 28 to 30 days. Now it is 40 to 50 days. Okay, there is a delay. You can't predict when you will get the periods. And on top of that, cramps may change, uh, excessive or exaggerated uh, premenstrual syndrome, etc. On top of that, uh, it's where everyone knows uh, the calcium and the vitamin D requirement for women, how it is important because once uh, you cross the age of 30, calcium absorption is drastically reduced in the body. You, are, you will not get the calcium from the food after you cross uh, 30. You have to keep that in mind. Okay, uh, so bone health will come down. You will lose calcium from your bone because your blood requires calcium. 
your body requires calcium for utilization from new, from the food you are not getting calcium what the body will do it has to go to the source stored uh, sources where calcium is already stored that is your bone okay so bone will become soft okay and the and the person will be finally they will get osteoporosis amenorrhea um, all the subclinical menstrual disorders may lead to uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea um, because of uh, nutritional uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea is related to um, com uh, complete stoppage of menstrual cycle or even if you are uh, menstruating it is very uh, hardly for one day and the menstrual uh, the amount of menstrual blood which is released from the body will be around 50 ml to uh, 80 ml throughout the entire uh, menstrual cycle so that is amenorrhea absence of uh, menstrual uh, menstrual cycle uh, and then uh, again there will be low energy without uh, any food for nutrition or this person may be suffering an eating disorder so that is why in anorexia nervosa you have seen that the girls who suffer from eating disorders will not have menstrual cycle okay they will not have there will be absence of periods and uh, also their bone health is very much deteriorated they will suffer from to the the teenage girls who had or in early 20s also okay not just not just the teenagers uh, women who are in their early 20s okay even if they are having eating disorders they will suffer from osteoporosis when they reach uh, approach their 40s and 50s Okay, so this is the female athlete triad. Uh, optimum amount of nutrition will make sure your menstrual health is optimum, your bone health is optimum. Any deviation from this will lead to all these disorders. That's female athlete triad. So we have nutritional programs in India. Uh, first is the World Bank Assisted ICDS three project okay they concentrate on making the adolescent girl in charge of her own nutrition okay they will impart education okay they will encourage the girl child to check her own weight to identify the signs and symptoms of eating disorders when she faces it herself or she finds it in her peers or in her friend circle somebody is suffering from eating disorder um, the this program encourages the girls empowers the girls to identify these eating disorders in the first stage itself okay uh, it, they will teach them the importance of each macronutrients micronutrients how it will affect their menstrual health okay all these kind of uh, education is given through this particular project okay so they can take a better care of their personal health as well as their household health okay they are uh, these girls can teach themselves as, as well as they can teach their family then there is supplementary food, 100 gram of food. Uh, the, it's a take-home ration. It can be given through the, distributed from the Anganwadis and all, to all the adolescent girls, school-going adolescent girls, as well as the non-school-going adolescent girls. They can go to the Anganwadi, and from Anganwadi, they will get this 100 gram of food per day, and this 100 gram of food can give 600 kilocalories, okay? And it has around uh, 18 to 20 gram of protein requirement, uh, for 300 days throughout the year, this particular portion will be given to the adolescent girls. So 18 to 20 gram of protein is there. And uh, along with that, uh, iron supplements is also provided. So to make sure that the girls have their optimum health. Then you have Sabla, the pro program under Rajiv Gandhi uh, scheme for empowerment of adolescent girls. Uh, it's also called a Sabla. Okay, in, this, in Sabla also, the main purpose is to empower the adolescent girl to make uh, health education on contraception, uh, menstrual hygiene, okay, personal hygiene, menstrual hygiene, contraception, sex edu education, etc. will be given to school-going girls as well as non-school-going uh, school girls. Okay, nutritional health, nutritional value, importance of nutrition, all these areas will be covered from the um, activists who are taking part in this Sabla program. Then uh, Chennai Corporation has come up with a program of giving 60 gram of biscuit to all the girls who have who are studying in 10th and 12th. Okay, uh, so uh, the purpose is to increase their attentiveness in class. Okay, 